As always, my name is Joseph Okechuku. I'm a Nollywood actor and a social activist. And um, I have a message that I want to share with Nigerians, uh, both home and abroad. It's very critical. It's very uh, important. And I think that, I mean, all that I owe everybody is just to share it. I don't claim to be a prophet or to be someone who lives with God and hears everything God says, but I do have a track record of being able to decipher some of the things I've heard from God in the past, and it turned out that they actually uh, were true. Uh, this is a message because it came to me because I was very troubled by what has been going on in Nigeria, and I know that everybody who is sane must have been troubled about the recent happenings in Nigeria, which even led me to make the video that I made to uh, the Vice President Yemi Oshimbanjo, uh, where I was addressing his conscience in still continuing to identify with what happened in Nigeria on February the 23rd, 2019. Sorry, I kept mentioning 2018 in that video. I'm sorry about that. You know, and I was just wondering why such a thing, you know, could happen. I mean, Pastor Yemi Shibajo is supposed to be a man of God, and this kind of thing happened, and he condoned it. So I made a video because the reason many people don't know why I made that, I made that video because people like him are the guys that everybody's looking forward to, to actually start the revolution that we are looking for. But unfortunately, rather than starting the revolution, he is rather undermining the revolution. Because what we need in Nigeria right now is the right kind of revolution, but it must not be misplaced. Now, let me give you the word I heard from the Lord. Well, I was very troubled and asking God, what do we do now? There are so many ways of approaching the issues in Nigeria at this time. But I wanted God to tell me what he thinks we need to do. And God told me in no ambiguous terms, very clearly, that he does not recognize or understand what we call church in Nigeria. That the people that you call Christians in Nigeria, that he, he can hardly identify with them. I was driving when this came to me. He said, but who are they? I don't even know these people. He said, if anything has to happen, of course, the judgment of God is coming. But you see, that when I see the blood, I will pass over you kind of moment may never come to us if we don't go on a massive, uh, a mass repentance program. God said the Nigerian churches have to repent. They have to repent of their sins. There should be a mass repentance exercise going on in all the churches in Nigeria. People have to cry unto God and ask for forgiveness. Because the churches were meant to be a place of positive transformation. They have now become a place of self-destruction. People go into the churches to look for girls to sleep with. Pastors sleeping with girls even though they're married. Boys who are single are sleeping with girls who are not married. Girls are sleeping with men who are married. Girls are sleeping with girls. Boys are sleeping with boys. Not happening in Sodom and Gomorrah. Not happening on the streets of Lagos or New York. Happening inside the churches inside the churches and they are condoned because some of them now say that hyper grace grace has taken care of everything yet the bible says grieve not the holy spirit walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling and yet grace permits you to insult god and destroy everything that we have worked for that christ has worked for on earth This is God's anger with the Christians in Nigeria. He says, they have taken me for granted for far too long. 
and I have turned my face away from them. And so the judgment that is coming is very harsh, extremely harsh, and I think is about to make a landfall in no time. Remember the video that I made to Pastor Yemi Oshimbajo, who is the vice president of Nigeria. In that video, I told everybody to watch out what is going to happen on March the 9th which is today in Nigeria, March the 9th, 2019. I said, watch out what is going to happen during the elections. I made it clear to all that there's going to be a serious apathy, voter apathy. People are not going to come out to vote. Right now, if you are on social media or wherever, go check your social media handles. Check everywhere. You can see people tagging, asking questions. What is going on? Nobody is coming out. Lagos, Abuja, East, South, everywhere. People are not coming out to vote because the last election that ever had in Nigeria was on the 23rd of February, 2019. And that election was no election. Why would you go to set up another election again? Who is going to come out? People are not fools in Nigeria. Stop treating people like they're fools. I have given you the word that I heard from the Lord. Nigerians, Nigerian Christians, fall on your knees. On Sunday, pastors should call entire congregations and tell them to come to repentance all over again. Every time God gives me a word like this, he always points to something very specific. And it's not as if this is the only sin that people commit, but the major sin that God is pointing to is the sin of immorality. This is why when he asked me to do this, some about a year ago or so, we set up what we call the Celibacy International. Celibacy International, where we promote sexual purity and moral chastity. When you look at me, a young man like me, I don't think I'm so badly looking. I'm a celebrity at the same time. I have the means. I have whatever it takes for me to enjoy any woman I want to enjoy anywhere in the world. I give that up. And I made a commitment and took a vow to God. And I said, Father, I am going to give my body up just so that it becomes a living sacrifice as long as my people will have their freedom. People who want to go and make money, they sacrifice fellow human beings. Sometimes their parents, their relatives, their mother, their, their brother, sister, cousins, just to make money. <clears throat> God is not asking you to come and kill yourself again. Christ has died. He said, let it be a living sacrifice for your body is the temple of God, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. If you want me to act and save you, if you want me to be in operation on earth and deliver you from the shackles of wickedness, of bondage, would you just let me send my Holy Spirit to come into the temple so that through your temple, the Holy Spirit can channel his positive godly energy to save and deliver you. Would you do that or are you going to continue to host a spirit of immorality constantly and still be expecting God to deliver you from bondage? It doesn't work. If you are not married, stop sleeping around. I am telling you this not because it is so easy. Look, you don't love sex more than I love sex. If we can't make sacrifices for what we need, if we can't make this ultimate sacrifice for the ultimate need at this time in our lives as a people, there is no way we are going to escape. We have been surrounded by the enemies, by the spearmen. They are not planning to. We have been surrounded. We are on the siege already. And there is nothing that the hand of any man can do for you. He said, put not your trust in any man, for vain is the help of man. God said, in the, uh, uh, what's this book in the Bible where Abraham was negotiating with the angels 
over Sodom and Gomorrah. Do you remember what they were asking for? They were not, Abraham was not saying, if you find 10 prayer warriors or 20 prayer warriors in Sodom, would you still destroy the city? He was asking, if you find 50, 40, 30, 20, 10 righteous men, would you still destroy the city? What was God looking for? Righteousness, not prayer warriors. Nigerians know how to pray. Very close to when there is a danger that they have seen. Two days to election, they will start releasing prayer points all over on WhatsApp. They can pray, speak in tongues. You can do all that. That's not what God is asking for. Now. He's asking for righteousness. Can you stop sleeping with that girl you're sleeping with if she's not your wife? Can you stop doing this? Can you stop it? You're a pastor, you're married. Why are you sleeping with girls up and down? You're a man, stick with your... That's why in Celibacy International, we take oaths. We take vow. When you want to move away from hell, which is what Nigeria has become now, and become an American citizen, if you manage to get the opportunity, you will raise your hand and take an oath. Is that not true? We take an oath to enter into a new covenant relationship with God. That relationship is what generates the righteousness energy that God needs to deliver us as a people. Now that vote uh, apathy has happened, March 9 has come, election has now happened, you are seeing it with your eyes that people are not coming out. We used to call this election. Now this is my message in closing. <laughs> All the elders in Nigeria... <clears throat> from the social cultural organizations religious organizations or whatever organization you all the elders let me give you this direct message enough is enough let us quit playing games let everybody now open up and begin to speak up and let's call the entire nation to a round table and begin the negotiation process the very last election that ever happened in Nigeria was February 23rd, 2019. After that, there has not been... This one, will you call what is happening on the 9th of March as election? Even when that one was completely, completely discredited, this one now is even non-existent. What you have is no government, no nation. Election is still being contested in court. Buhari can't sleep with his two eyes closed. And now you have this sham again happening on March 9th, which is like nothing. What are we waiting for? Is it when blood is flowing all over on the street before we can behave like people? Let the elders now speak up boldly and bring everybody, all the indigenous units that make up this place called Nigeria, come to a round table. Can we have that negotiation that the British colonial masters don't want us to have? Let's have it right now. Sovereign National Conference. Beyond this period, you will never see peace anywhere in Nigeria for whatever reason. Mark my words. We can't see fire and just willingly walk into the fire. It is too childish and too nonsensical. Can we act like humans for once? Once. Let our elders call everybody together. Let us go to a round table right now while there is still time. Because time is running out. The hurricane judgment of God is dropping. It's making a landfall soon. And we don't have time anymore. Let's forget all these elections. I said it before. I've never believed in Nigerian elections. And I've always told you people, I said, listen, with the Nigerian elections, do you know what elections are? Elections, I, I did, I did um, a program some time ago on uh, uh, how to break ancestral curses, okay? And I was telling people that every ancestral curse has something that is used to update it 
and to uh, to keep it active to validate it constantly so when you have an ancestral curse in your family the devil doesn't just leave you alone no he makes you to get addicted to something that you will use to continue to update it and validate that curse in your life so it stays active forever it could be an addiction to sexual immorality it could be drunkenness it could be something or the other now the curse of slavery colonial slavery and bondage is being activated and validated daily by the elections that you go to every day. Not that I don't like, but I'm telling you what these Nigerian elections are. That's why when the British are standing with any particular candidate, you can never win that candidate because you don't know anything. They can manipulate any elections that they want. So the more you keep claiming you are a politician and you're going to elections, the more you are validating your bondage that does not want to break. We are the reason why we are still in bondage. We must end this. God has gone ahead of us now to destroy the whole two elections. He has done what he can do as God. It is now left for us to rise up and say, now it is clear that two elections did not hold. It didn't make sense. So let us go ahead and renegotiate the union. If you call elections one million times, you will not get anything out of it. The elections must fulfill the hard desires of the colonial masters. If it does not, it means that you are no longer in Nigeria. So rather than continuing to validate this wickedness, let us shut it down. Everybody come together. If we don't come together, the expected outcome is that at some point we may not be able to handle the hurricane judgment that is coming. Rather than wait for that time, why can't we just do the right thing and let God have his way? This is my two cents. I'm pleading and I hope that our people will listen. Forget about these two elections. Let's go to the round table. After these elections, who is going to be ruling you? Who is it that is going to be? Who elected the people that are going to be ruling? The president that you elected now is being, his victory is being contested. So th this ones that now nobody came out to vote. Who is voting who now? Just forget about elections. Bring everybody to the round table and renegotiate the union. Do it now while there is still time. The moment we run out of time, Nigeria will go down as a very sad story that could actually have been prevented. May God help us.